James Canning. So lovely to see you. Thanks, Em. Lovely to be here. You're someone that I've admired and, and um, known in this industry for a really long time. You've a really long career as a DJ and a producer, and you've also run a label called Respect Music. Anything else we should know about you? I've got numerous uh, production aliases, but I, I won't rattle those off. Uh, Rubber Johnson's probably the most notable with uh, Otto Mitter, partner in crime in the studio. Very cool music too. Yeah. So look, today we're going to talk about the number one quality that indie artists need to survive in this business. Okay, as we both know, it's a challenging business. It has its ups and downs. And something that you said to me once really stuck with me, which is that you should never put conditions on what you love unconditionally. What do you mean by that? Uh, basically, I mean that through my experience in the industry over the last 20 odd years is that as an artist, there are moments in your career where you you feel down and out, and and I've found that the the common part of that equation is that I've created conditions, generally monetary conditions, to aspects of what I love. I've over time come to terms with the fact that I am much happier identifying the aspect of the industry that I love with my heart, which is the studio. That's my sacred place, and. Uh, by removing those expectations and just doing it purely as a selfish artistic outlet has created so much more joy in the process. And look, you know, in this industry, it does get hard. I mean, I think I see you as a bit of a kindred spirit in this industry because a lot of our friends and associates that were in the industry back in the day, early days when we knew each other first, have kind of fallen off the wagon so to speak and disappeared and and found it too tough so you know i want i know for me what's kept me doing what i do what do you think is the number one quality that you need to kind of cultivate in order to stay in this industry look i think you've got to have a you've got to have a lot of persistence you've got to but you've also got to have that that seated that seated feeling inside like for, for me and, and I'm sure it's the same for you is when I think of music music is that friend for me that you could always turn to didn't matter what mood you were in it was always a song that you could tap into to to get you through that emotion and um, it's just something that even if I put it down for a moment I have to come back to it it's not a choice I have it's it's just who who I am so yeah persistence and and that love there for, for what we do, I guess. So that's kind of what keeps you here is, is the love of the art? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Do you think maybe there's a little bit of that OCD that I, that I have as well? <laughs> without a doubt, without a doubt. Oh, look, with, with everything I've done in life, there's been a definite element of obsessive compulsive disorder and, um, and perfectionism, um, always trying to do things better. And that's why I'm, I've, I've got probably a hundred times the amount of tracks unreleased <laughs> than I have released. So it can be a double-edged sword. I show some of those works to my peers and they're like, man, just release it. Why are you holding on to it? It's a timestamp of where you were at that time. You should just let it go, um, which is an interesting way to look at it because they're just sitting on a hard drive and no one gets to hear it, I guess, uh, at the moment. But I will release things when I'm, when I'm ready, I guess. There yeah. is no expectation, like I said. Yeah, and I don't think there's anything wrong with being a perfectionist and having a high standard in your work. I mean, it, it's all. what makes you who you are and, and it's brought you to where you are in your career. Yeah. So let's just recap that. Let's, if there was one kind of nugget of, of advice or one sort of pearl of wisdom that we could take away today, would it be something like the love of your art will sustain you when times get tough? Without a doubt, yes. So I'm going to ask you a little fun question now. I'm going to ask you if you were stranded on a desert island and you could just take one CD with you, one album, for the rest of your life, what would it be? One album? Oh, wow. You really put me on the spot there. <laughs> What's the first thing that pops into your head? Uh, the first thing that pops into my head is, is Tribe Called Quest, Check the Rhyme, um, but not off the album. <laughs> it, it was... 
it was uh, it was the video remix. I think it's the uh, Ali Shaheed mix or something, but um, the one with the whistle through it. I love I, how specific that is. Yeah, it was. It, 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 yeah. What is it about that song that you love? Um, I don't. Know, I think I was about twelve when I heard it. Um, it's just I've, I've just always loved it. I've got a I've got a copy of it at home still sealed in plastic. Maybe it's so. the thing that actually got you into this. Maybe. Mess. It was definitely one of them. <laughs> That's for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today, James. Yeah, thank you.